hello so mates you welcome back to my channel so in this video we'll be learning how to make this beautiful tube um bustier with strap now i will be teaching you how to make it to cover your boobs very well and cover your armpits now in this particular one you don't need your shoulder measurement so let's get started you need your wording you need your hair stay, you need your fabric and your lining, then the zipper. We are only working on the upper part in this video because it's very lengthy. So for the full dress, I'm going to post another video of it. So to get started now, I went ahead to divide my fabric into two because I want to draft both the front and back at the same time, okay? So I just went ahead to roll a straight line. So what you are basically going to do now is to minus 4 inches away from the upper part of your tape roll to get your chest line. My chest line major 8.5. So I minus 4 inches away, okay, to major the 8.5. So I have approximately 4.5 as my chest line measurement, okay. So after marking the chest line measurement, I went ahead to take my nipple point measurement. Then I went ahead to mark my under bust and my waistline now you should know that because it's carrying a side that the waistline for the front and the back is not equal so for the front is two inches longer than the back for me so i'm just going to mark to the back also i will mark 8.5 inches down way for the chest line 15.5 for the waistline but for the front waistline we have 17.5 so i'm going to connect all the lines together and label them accordingly okay so now i have the front pattern and i have the back pattern so i'm going to label it the back pattern that's the chest line and that's the waistline the chest line the bust point the under bust and the waistline for the front pattern so the next thing we want to do now like i said you don't need your shoulder measurements to get this tube done so on the chest line i will measure my bust measurement on the chest line then on the upper part of the paper i will also measure my chest measurement and connect a straight line so after doing that the next thing i want to do now is to take my dart intake my dart intake is four inches so i'm going to measure four inches from the waistline up all to the neckline which is the shoulder line that we have here then i will rule a straight line so after rolling a straight line, the next thing I want to do now, I will go ahead and impute my dart intake is 2.5. So I'm marking one inch one side and I'm marking 1.5 on the other side because I'm doing on equal darts. Okay, it works for me. So after that, on the apex line, which is the boss point line, you come down by half inch and you go up by half inch. So I'm going to connect the dart intake lines together. Okay, after connecting it, we are now going to curve it from the boss point line. You know, we came down by half inch. It is from that half inch we came down with. You will connect straight to the dart legs that we've created on the under bust. Then you connect the other side. You see the way I place my ruler. Please make sure you do yours the same. Then on the shoulder line, we are going to go in by one inch. I made a mistake here and I was marking half inch on this side. So I'm going to correct it. So we're doing two inches that intake on the upper part. Please take note, okay? If it's lesser than two inches, the upper part, which is the chest line area now, which is um, the shoulder now, is going to be bigger than you. So make sure you do one inch that intake on both sides that's two inches in total then i went to impute my waist measurement on the waistline and i added the 2.5 that we've used for that intake now i added it to it because you know we'll be cutting that place away and i connected it so after that we are going to take our bust that which is the side that then from the bust point line which is the nipple line you come down by two inches and connect a strand a slant line like so so after connecting all of this line together, now to close the bust that, you know, we don't need that bust that. To close that bust that, we have to open up the dart on the waistline. So after opening it up to that point, I'm going to open this part to the point of the bust that also. Then I will slit it straight to the bust point area. Then I'm going to close it up this way. So after placing it, and is aligning i'm going to tape it down 
now if you're washing carefully on the side of this part i'm taping you can see there is no more echo so i'm going to reconnect it to the chest line you are reconnecting only to the chest line take note of that so um you can see what i'm doing i'm reconnecting it to the chest line and all the curves you get from it that's what you will follow then i was trying to close the the shoulder that you see if the chest line is equal it is equal so i'll go ahead and slit the extra that we have i will slit them away because we don't need it okay so i'll go ahead and slit the lower part that also then i will just cut everything out completely for us to go ahead and work on the neckline okay so now you can see that we didn't use shoulder measurement for this one take note if you want it fully covered, if you want your armpit closed, you don't need your shoulder measurement for your tube bustier. Take note. So I went ahead to tape it down. Why? Because I want to create a little curve on the center front. So you know that after taping it, they are not equal. Then I marked like one inches away from the side. Can you see what we have? Then I created a little curve on the center front. Okay. Just to give it a little curve. So after that, I will go ahead and cut it out. Then I will separate the papers again because we need them cut separately before we go ahead to sew. Okay. So um, if you're still watching at this point, please, if you're confused, ask questions. Okay. So this is what we have. The front pattern is done. For the back pattern, we're doing the same thing. So now on your chest line measure your bust measurement my bust measurement is 10 inches then on the neckline i'm going to measure 10 inches also then i will roll a straight line okay so after doing that the next thing you want to do now is to go ahead and impute your waist measurement on the waistline and add extra one inch for that intake then go ahead and take your that intake my that intake is four inches so i'm marking half inch to the left half inch to the right i will come up and mark four inches again for the that intake so those that legs now i'm going to connect them together with half inch each okay so after doing that, now I will connect the waistline to the bust line. So now that I've done this part, the next thing now, I want to make a little curve on the back. So I came down with about 1.5 of an inch at the center back to create a curve because I don't want it. If it's too high at the back, it's not going to fit. That's why I came down a little. So after creating the curve, I'm just going to cut my paper out but i didn't cut it completely i just went ahead to cut the back curve that we've just made the shoulder curve for the back that we just made i will cut it off then the next thing now we need zipper allowance for it okay so um i went ahead to label the center front and the center back so we don't get confused so i'm going to get an extra sheet and tip it so we can create the zipper allowance okay so you can see me taping it now after taping it now on the sides of the paper on the side okay not the center back on the side i'm going to add extra half an inch to the side because we'll be using the half an inch to create the zipper tightening at the center back then i will connect it to the chest line can you see what i've done then on this center back now we are going to mark 1.5 for zipper allowance on the center back 1.5 from the waistline and on the upper part connect a straight line then that extra half inch we added to the side we are going to minus it from the center back you know that half inch was added to the side back we will minus it from the center back then you create another slant line straight up to the neckline like so so after connecting it this way i will just go ahead and cut it all out so now the next thing you have to do now i don't want the zipper popping up at the waistline at the back so i came in by half inch and i created a slant so i that half inch i came up with now i connected connected it to the that leg can you see what i've done so i'm just going ahead to cut it off so that by the time i sew you know when you saw the back of that dress there's nothing like zip that is bulging right so that's what i did so i'm going to cut the dart away from the back also 
And after that, the front and back pattern is ready. The next thing we are going to be doing now is to go ahead and cut on the fabric. I'm just going to place them like this, arrange the fabric and cut. I'm not going to show us that part to save time because this video was too long. So now here, I've gone ahead to cut. This is what we have. Now I'm going to explain what I've done. Now for the front pattern, you can see that at the center, hmm, I added half an inch down on both sides because that's the half inch you used to join them together. I have cut on the lining, I've cut on the fabric, and I've cut on the hair stay. Okay? Then on the side, hmm, I added my seam allowance, which is 1.5. Take note, on the side, the joining allowance for the side is 1.5. Then for the back side, I added 1.5 also for seam allowance. You can see it. Then... The joining at the middle is half inch each, okay? Then for the zipper allowance, it is still standard. So I went ahead to remove all the pins. After removing all the pins, the next thing we want to do is to iron the hair stay on the fabric. Don't forget that you are ironing the hair stay to the wrong side of the fabric. Now you can see how I'm feeling the hair stay. You see the side that is sharp like it's sand. It feels like sand on your skin. That's where the gum is that will attach the hair stay to your fabric. So you can see me arranging them. We will now go to the ironing table to iron everything properly. Okay, so it's just the same thing. I'm just showing us the process for those newbies that will be watching this video. So you just iron everything properly. I'm going to iron for both the front and the back. Every part of it is carrying hasty. So after ironing everything neatly, the next thing we're going ahead to do now is the wording. If you're still watching at this point as a returning subscriber, thank you so much. I love you. There will be no me on YouTube without you. I'm grateful. If you're new, you're welcome. Don't forget to subscribe, okay? So I've gone ahead to iron the hair stay on the fabric, both the front and back. Everything is done. So now I want to cut the wording, right? So what you do, fold your wording into two. Fold it into two. Now make sure that you are folding enough pieces of it that will be able to size the fabric. So we are cutting the center front first. And you know that it is on fold. You can see that my fabric is on fold. Make sure that your own fabric is on fold, okay? By the time you finish cutting it, we are going to spread it and you understand what we've just done in case you're confused. So you place it this way. Then I'll go ahead to hold it down with pin, okay? Make sure it is placed equally, okay? Then hold it down with pin or whatsoever it is that you have. Then I'm just going to cut it out. I will follow the curves. Can you see what I'm doing? So... I will just cut it out. Then when I get to the upper part, I will leave like half an inch. You know, we'll be turning the main fabric with lining. So I'm going to leave an extra half an inch where the wording will not get to. Can you see what I've done? After flipping it, you can see the half an inch up. So I'm going to now fold the wording again into two to cut on the both sides of the front. Okay, you can see the way I am placing it also. You go ahead and pin it down and then you go ahead and cut please don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like comment and share if you're new i appreciate you and don't forget to join us here because i share details and explanatory video from time to time so you can see how i am cutting it after cutting it now the next thing you want to do of course is to iron the wording to the fabric because you have to iron it so i'm leaving half inch on the upper part also because we'll be joining um lining with it when we get to that part you understand it very well so now i'm just going to curve the sides according to how i want it there's no special way to do it so you can see how i'm curving it so after covering it to my choice, to the way I want it, we can now go ahead and iron it. If you have any question, please ask. And please, most of the questions you ask, the answers are already in the video. It means that you people skip or you forward the video. 
most of the questions, 95% of the questions I get are already answered in the video. So please watch the video to the end so that you will understand because if you try to skip, you will not grab everything. So now the wording is done. We've gone out. We've successfully cut the wording. This is what we have. You can see that you can see the one for the center front that we folded. When you spread it, this is what it will look like. I'll go ahead and iron them together. So you can see me flipping it. So you iron. Same way we iron the wording and the hair stay to the fabric. It is the same way we are ironing the wording to the fabric. So I'm just quickly going to do that. And we will now go to the machine. We are going to the sewing machine to sew it together because... I want to take us through all the process okay so i'm showing us the sewing parts also because of the newbies that might be among us so you can see how i'm ironing it that's how you iron it until it is fully gummed to the fabric now i've ironed it you can see how neatly done it is so we'll go and join them together so here we are the sewing machine right so i'm going to be putting it together one after the other so when you want to sew your bust here you start from the lower part from the waist part okay not from the shoulder part please take note of that so you place it together and you sew as you're sewing it you know it is curvy so as you're sewing it you're guiding it with your hand you're placing it on top you're making sure that they are equal so you can see how i'm guiding it with my hand that's how to sew your bustier so i will continue sewing it like this so we'll repeat the same thing for the other side so i'll be showing us how to put them together for the main fabric then on the lining i'll be doing it off camera because like i've said this video was is too long so i have to cut some part away to save our time so you can see me joining it's together the same way so as you're sewing you're guiding it as you're sewing you're guiding it so that you're not confused at the end of the day so after sewing it the front pattern is ready we'll go ahead and join the back together also okay so when you when you're done now and you flip it to the right side this is what you have the next thing you have to do is to notch it okay you have to notch it from uh, beginning to the end on both sides that we've sewn on you have to notch it you can see how i'm notching it i'm going to notch it all through so that when i flip it it will relax way okay so now after notching it will now go ahead and join the back area together so you can see what we have okay so now we'll join the back together so for the back you can see me putting them together one thing you need to do is don't throw your pattern paper away after cutting on your fabric okay that's what will serve as a guide when you want to put them together okay i don't throw my paper my paper is under the fabric by the time i pick the last one you will know it is the paper that guides me on which one is coming with which one okay if you understand what i mean so don't throw your pattern paper away until you're done sewing the dress completely and it came out where because if you make it if you should make if you should make any mistake it is still the paper that will tell you where you went wrong okay so you can see me joining the back together so everything we've done for the main fabric now we are going to repeat it for the back both the front and back so i will do that off camera like i've said before so now this is the front and you can see how nice it looks like and this is the lining i've gone ahead to join it to so for the back pattern we've done the same thing so the next thing i have to do now we are joining everything together lining by lining and fabric by fabric so this is the front and the back pattern one side i'm going to bring the other side of the back okay and place it on it so after that this is you can see it we are go, now going to join it side by side i will go to the sewing machine and join it together so i'm going to place it on each other like this and join with a 1.5 half an inch added to the side i will do the same thing to the lining and come back so here now i've gone ahead to join it together i've joined the lining together i've joined the fabric together separately 
and I have the strap I have created. It is 1.5 for the width I use in creating the strap you can see on the table. So to get the strap position, I came out by two inches from the bustier joining, two inches on both sides, I came out. Then on the other side, I came in by two inches, which was wrong. I corrected it in our shows. It was wrong because it was too close to my armpit area. These two inches I came in with for the back side is too close to my armpit area. I corrected it. So now I'm going to pin my strap to it, to the part I have marked. At this point, for the back part, I still place it at the point I have marked because I didn't realize until I have finished sewing it, then I have to correct it, okay? So now, what you do is, don't go in. For the back, don't go in. You just come out or you put the strap exactly at the back joining. You can see the joining we have. You can place it exactly at that part and not the two inches we mark. So you can see me trying to place the strap correctly. I have to fold the fabric accordingly to how it will be for me to get the right placement for the strap. So you should do the same thing. Place your strap correctly. Now you have to put your strap before you turn with fabric so that the sewing will be in seam. It will be inside. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to do here. So after that, this is what we have. Okay, so I'm now going to turn with the lining. The strap has been attached. Can you see it? So we're going to, the strap is going to be on the inside like you can see it. So I'll place the lining on top of it and I'm going to join from the center back with half an inch up onto the upper neckline straight to the center back again and close it. After that, this is what we have and removing the pins, then flipping it to the right side. This is what we have. Like I said, we are only learning the upper parts here. Okay. Now, it's a very beautiful dress I made. I'll be showing us the outcome at the end of this video. If you are interested in it, watch out for the next part I will be posting. So you can see that the strap has been attached. And like I said, it was not in the right position for the back strap. So I shifted it, okay? So I shifted this one forward to that exact joining we have. So I corrected it. After correcting it, this is what we have. You can see it. So... The next thing now, I will go ahead and join the lower part of the dress to it because it's a dress I am making, okay? But I'm only showing us how to make a tube with a strap that will not expose your body. So if you want to see how I got the full dress made, how I got the circle part, everything, watch for the next video. So this is what the full dress looks on me. If you want to see how I achieve it completely, watch out for the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.